Okay, <laughs> I have a confession to make. But you know what? It's really not a confession because I'm sure you know that I do it. Scott Kelby does it, the Kelby One members do it. So the confession is this. Every single picture that you've seen in this slideshow by me has been processed to maybe a more or less degree. So processing a picture could be just cropping it, maybe a little bit of burning, a little dodging, uh, maybe playing with the shadows and the highlights. So what I'd like to do in this segment is show you some before and after examples. So look at this shot of this McCoy. It just took off. The wings are out, so wings up is the tip. I exposed for the highlights. The animal was standing out from the background. Well, I actually took this shot right outside of the lobby at Crocodile Bay Resort. It's not the greatest shot in the world, but I, when I saw the image you know, on the back of my camera, I said, okay, I can't believe how lucky I am that that bird was right against those dark leaves. Now, because the animal didn't fill the frame, here's my tip. When the animal doesn't fill the frame and you know you're gonna crop in, you always wanna shoot at the lowest possible ISO setting to get the cleanest possible shot. The lower the ISO, the more you could crop in and make the picture larger. So again, here's the before picture, and there's the uh, after picture. Okay, these snakes here, uh, I love this snake. Now you may not be able to see the difference, and in, when it comes to image processing and enhancing your photos, this is the key. You don't really want to you know, overdo it, especially when it comes to vignetting. You don't want it to look too fake. So the picture on the left of this snake is a straight out of the camera shot. It is a little bit soft. Again, you might not be able to tell the difference too much, but the picture on the right is sharpened. Now, here's the thing. This is my technique for sharpening. I never sharpen globally. In other words, I don't sharpen the whole picture. What I do is I sharpen selectively. In Photoshop, I go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filter, and then I go to Unsharp Mask, which is a, <laughs> you could use a lot of different sharpening techniques, but I like Unsharp Mask. So when, when you do that, you get like a little mask there, like with an adjustment layer where you can mask in and mask out. So I sharpen the whole thing, and then what I do, so the whole image was sharpened, and in the picture on the right then, I use my brush tool with black selected as a foreground color, and I masked out the sharpening in the back, so the subject stood out. Another tip that applies to what I'm saying is think like a painter. A painter's not going to say, man, I'm going to sharpen the whole thing. You know, I'm going to increase the contrast of the whole thing. A painter's going to think selectively. So especially when it comes to sharpening, don't think globally, think uh, selectively. Okay, Scott Kelby teases me. Uh, <laughs> he teases me a lot about th that I use Photoshop more than Lightroom. Well, here's the reason why, one of the reasons why I use Photoshop more than Lightroom. The clone stamp tool works a thousand times better. Well, maybe not a thousand times better. It works many times better in Photoshop than it does in Lightroom. When you're in the rainforest, that clone stamp tool is a godsend. Look at the picture on the left. You know, I love this bird. I mean, the pose, the color, everything. But the background is terrible. You know, these bright lights are coming through the leaves. The twigs are overexposed and blown out. You know, it's a snapshot, but look at that picture on the light. Look what I was able to do with the clone stamp tool. And again, thinking selectively like a painter, selectively burning and dodging. You can also see a little bit of catch light in the eyes. Okay, the slots. The slots are usually up in the trees. I got this shot the last time I was here. You know, I love the pose. I love the gesture. You can see the toes there hanging from the branches but I didn't have a flash this time. So the background is overexposed and washed out. This would have been an outtake if I was shooting slides. And I used to shoot slides before a lot of you were born. But look what I was able to do in Photoshop. I burned, I dodged, I, I put uh, some highlights on the face and I made it a sepia tone. So here's the before picture, you know, kind of a boring snapshot, but I think this looks more almost like a fine art print and I put like a fine art frame around it. Um, so you always want to think about the end result. Last time I was here also we saw these two beautiful owls. Once again, shooting in the rainforest, man, this is such a challenge. Backlight, the branches, be, you know, in front of and behind and all around. Well, I was able to get one shot, and again, it's a natural light shot. If you look at the picture on the left, you can't really see the detail, not only on, on the animal's body, but you can't see the detail in the eyes. In the picture on the right, what I did is I used Nick Color Effects Pro. There's a feature in there called Detail Extractor. Nick Color Effects Pro Detail Extractor. And what this magically does, it extracts detail 
from dark areas without adding noise. So after I did that, I used my dodge tool and I lightened the eyes. So you can see, the, and I also cropped the picture. So you can see there's a big difference between the picture on the left and the picture on the right, and it all has to do with processing. Look at this cute little monkey. I love the gesture. In wildlife photography, gesture is so important. This is a straight out of the camera shot. We have beautiful catch light coming in. The light is coming through the canopy. But it's kind of like a snapshot because the background is really busy. Well, look what happens when I cropped it and I darkened the background and I blurred the background a little. So here's the before, straight out of the camera shot. And here we have a shot that I'm really proud of. It's actually one of my favorite uh, pictures of, uh, of one of the monkeys that I've uh, taken down here. Talk about cropping and talking about image enhancing. When you're going through the rainforest, you're going to get a lot of shots like this because you, you have to shoot fast. So it's a nice enough shot. Uh, by itself, it's a nice environmental shot, but there's not a lot of contrast in the scene, and the monkeys are kind of getting lost in the background. So once again, look at this. A little bit of cropping, darkening the background, blurring the background, and using that dodge tool on the eyes. So for me, as a photographer, uh, you know, for a wedding photographer, they shoot what's there and they don't have the time that I have, you know, to process all these pictures. But for a wildlife and nature photographer, I think, you know, it's like, it's like I don't want to say a 50-50 deal, but it's definitely part image capture and part uh, image processing. I'll leave you with, uh, with this shot. This is a red-eyed tree frog that I photographed here at Crocodile Bay on one of our night walks with a ring light. So when you use a ring light, you get this nice, beautiful, even light, or you could get what's called ratio lighting because you could, the ring lights have two tubes in them, and you could like adjust the tubes for different uh, ratios. So I could actually turn this tube off and get side lighting, or top lighting, or back lighting, or I can get like one to one or two to one, all different types of uh, uh, lighting. So the advantage to using a ring light is you can shoot uh, in the dark, <laughs> get a nice sharp shot, Plus, you can shoot an F-22 and get nice depth of field. But you do get the reflection the picture on the right. You could see, you could definitely see the reflection of those tubes right in the eyes. But on the right, once again, in Photoshop, I took those out. So I was able to get the shot that I want. So once again, when you're in the rainforest and all your work, think about the end result. Use what's called creative visualization to envision the end result. When you're shooting, envision you know, what a long lens will do, what a wide aperture will do, what a fast shutter speed will do. But then also keep in mind the magical things you could do in Photoshop and Lightroom and with plugins.